Hello YouTube, it's been ages since I last did a uh, video for this YouTube channel. Uh, as you can see I've redecorated uh, somewhat and that's because I am now busy uh, reading my book uh, Boy in the Clouds or Pojken om Ålen, this one, uh, for my other YouTube channel. Um, so I've been keeping busy with that and also doing other stuff but now I finally bought something uh, that I thought I'd like to talk about and it's this the DJI Spark drone which is a <laughs> incredible tiny little thing uh, that you can fly around with I've been wanting to buy one of these since really Phantom 2 came out. Well, not one of these, but DJI drones. Uh, since Phantom 2 came out, I believe that's 2013, 2014. Um, that's really when camera drones started to, to be plausible, at least for me. I've flown other drones and I always fail miserably. Uh, but the DJI drones had all these help. So basically it flies itself and you just kind of tell it what you want to do and it does that. And each generation of uh, drones from DJI has become more and more competent in doing that um, and also more and more expensive. But this little guy is reasonably priced still can do a lot of things it's not as cool as phantom 4 or phantom 4 pro or mavic pro but it still can do a lot of things so i bought it i unboxed it and i thought i'd tell you about the experience so let's go so here's all the stuff i got when i bought my dji spark as you can see i bought the arctic white version it was also available in the blue version in my local shop, but uh, I went for the white one. Um, the reason I bought it uh, right now is that they had a promotion where they lowered the price about 10%. So I bought the Flymore Combo Pack, which means that I got a bunch of extra stuff. So I got the uh, the Spark, I got the controller i got spare battery i got the uh, charging dock kind of thing where you can charge three batteries um, i also believe that you can use a usb charger like for your phone and plug it in here and charge the your spark batteries from that you get a power brick get a cord you get four propeller guards you get a bag you also get four extra propellers and you get a whole stack of literature uh, with uh, I mean everything's got it all its own little book here so that's battery charging hub the spark thing uh, information about the fly more combo information about the propeller guards that's a surprisingly thick manual for that information about the batteries uh, quick start guide remote controller and then a dji care refresh keep flying information thing and this is kind of a, a an insurance if you are a klutz clumsy guy uh, and you expect that you're going to crash or lose your drone you can buy this and they will basically replace it for you or repair it which is nice i never flown uh, dji drones before so i actually got the refresh thing that cost about 10 percent of the original price of the combo so really i paid the original price but i got the insurance with that so 
this is all the stuff it came in a very nice box uh, which looks very dji ish uh, minimalistic on the outside uh, the bag that you get is some kind of nylon thing water resistant it's pretty nice it's a bit tight uh, but it's pretty nice i don't know if i can fit my propeller guards in the bag uh, i probably could but uh, it, it's a bit cramped actually uh, extra battery very good to have uh, because you run out quite quickly uh, the charger that can charge more than one battery at a time is great otherwise you'd have to charge uh, the battery using the USB port on the um, spark uh, propeller guards don't really know when I need them possibly when I'm flying indoors or I don't know and the controller and to be honest the reason I got the Flymore combo pack was mainly because of the controller because I just don't like you know trying to fly things with the uh, with my phone uh, because uh, the touchscreen doesn't tell you where you are and this is a scary thing so controller that's my main reason for buying the combo pack so this is the stuff you get so i'd like to start by uh, talking a bit about the unboxing experience because the unboxing of this device was perhaps the worst i have ever experienced the setup process was horrible uh, and it didn't really need to be uh, but it's two reasons for the horribility of the setup process uh, one of them is <laughs> this documentation which is absolutely tiny uh, you can't read this uh, i think i can't read it uh, because I am over 40 years old so my eyes don't really work like they used to even with my reading glasses this is actually fairly difficult to read there's a lot of text and it's absolutely tiny and the characters aren't actually even printed black on white it's kind of gray uh, except for the bold parts which means it's really difficult to read and when you get the the drone and you unbox it uh, you go oh god that's a lot of stuff turn to the quick start guide obviously uh, the quick start guide tells you you know a bunch of stuff of what it is you have here and what the different parts are called and then it says download the DJI Go 4 app so you do that then it says prepare the battery which is basically charge the battery uh, and then activation and connection and it says launch the DJI Go 4 app tap the icon in the right corner scan the QR code on the storage box and follow the prompt for activation I didn't actually do that um, sorry uh, because I couldn't read it uh, in the evening of Friday so instead I tried to power on the aircraft connect to the Wi-Fi of the aircraft with my mobile device and launch the app and then it goes into controls how to fly uh, that's not what happened there was a big registration process uh, which I had to go through and it tells you that from September the 2nd you need to upgrade your everything uh, your firmware because otherwise you can't fly uh, so the first thing that happens when when I connected to the to the spark was that it said you need to update the uh, firmware now to, to talk to the the spark you actually have to connect uh, your phone's uh, Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi. This is a Wi-Fi node, basically. So you connect to this network, and then you can control it. And it 
checks the firmware and says you need to update your firmware. And then you want to download the firmware, but you can't do that because you don't have internet access while you're connected to this. So you have to disconnect the Spark network, uh, connect to my whatever it is you have, or cellular or, or my local uh, home network, download the firmware, then you have to reconnect to the drone to do the installation process. That you know, it's, it's a couple of steps and it feels kind of cumbersome. To make things worse, it didn't work. Um, I could disconnect the network and I could download the firmware, but when I tried to install the firmware, uh, it wouldn't work. Uh, tried a couple of times, uh, restarted everything, and suddenly the firmware was installing. Um, then, you know, start up again, uh, connect to the, uh, to the drone with my phone and try to do anything. Then it says, ah, uh, the battery needs to update the firmware as well. Again, you have to disconnect the drone, connect to the Wi-Fi, download the firmware upgrade, disconnect from my Wi-Fi, connect to the drone Wi-Fi, start the installation process. It failed uh, or actually didn't fail it just didn't work so I had to turn everything off start it up again connect to the drone and <laughs> try to download the the firmware which it didn't because I already had it start the installation process and then it worked and then you know restart everything again and up you go and then it was ready to fly Cool, brilliant. By then, I had been working with this for two, three hours. So it was getting a bit late in the evening. Um, so I decided to pick it up in the morning again. The morning after, I wanted to uh, link my remote to the drone because I wanted to fly with the remote and not with my phone, as I said. So I checked out the manual and it said because I bought the combo, uh, fly more combo, uh, the remote and the drone will always already be linked. So I fired up the remote and I connected my phone by connecting to the Wi-Fi network provided by the remote. Uh, and then I was told that I needed to upgrade the remote as well. Okay one more thing to upgrade sure uh, download the firmware update go into you know back to the remote upload the firmware uh, and start the installation process and then it just hung at five percent and no matter what i did i restarted i tried it several times it always just stopped at five percent didn't finish, didn't give any kind of uh, error indication. It just told me to wait. Uh, eventually I got fed up, looked on the internet and it turns out that the firmware or the app version 4.0.8 or something like that, or 4.8, 4.0.8, ends with an eight. That uh, has some problems when it comes to upgrading both the uh, spark the battery and the remote so they suggested for the spark and the battery you connect it to your computer and do the upgrade that way for the remote you apparently can't do that so the only solution that i could find was to downgrade the app to a previous version using a magic link that i found in a forum uh, so i did that i removed the, the uh, app that I installed. I installed the older version that I downloaded from the web. Uh, I had to you know change my phone settings to install from unknown sources and stuff like that. That started up, connected to the remote, downloaded and installed the firmware without problem. I could then uh, remove the uh, old version of the app, download the new version of the app, 
and everything was working just fine. And then after about say six or seven hours of setup and preparations, I was finally ready to go uh, outside and fly my drone. So that is by far the most obnoxious setup process I have ever experienced. And DJI, while they make great drones and, and stuff, uh, they clearly have some work to do when it comes to, uh, you know, ease of use and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but still, it's up, it's ready, and uh, let's go fly. Uh, for the first flight, I went to a field not far from my house. Uh, it's not a big field, but it gives me, you know, some space uh, for error uh, in my first flight. Um, was some confusion for me uh, before I managed to to uh, get it flight ready. Uh, wait for the GPS. Uh, I stupidly brought a metal white metal thing to put on the ground to have you know put the uh, uh, spark on so it didn't sit on the grass that turned out to be a mistake because that confused the compass because there were magnetic surface or something like that so i had to move around a bit before i actually got everything settled but once i got it started it's you know, it's it's pure magic how these things work because you just tell it to take off and it will take off and it will hover just, you know, above the ground. It says 1.2 meters. I can't really say if it is 1.2 meters, but it's something like that. And it just hovers and then you can start uh, flying. The controller works great. Uh, it's really easy. You You have... Uh, ascend and descend, turn left or turn right, and then you have go forward, go backwards, and move left or move right. And I just picked the default settings for everything basically, so it is always in relation to which way the drone is facing. Which is a bit confusing at first, because if it's facing you, then left becomes right and stuff like that. But, uh, it, you know, it's not really hard to learn. I also believe that you can turn it into a mode where, where it will always be in relation to you. So left will always be your left and not the drone's left. Uh, before I started, I actually got the uh, DJI Care Refresh thing. Uh, it was 67 euros, uh, but since I had never flown these before, uh, I thought I might as well get that. So I did that on the field, actually. Uh, the first flight, I forgot to bring the memory card, uh, and I thought, oh, that's never mind, I will just download. Uh, stream it and, and record the video on my phone uh, which is connected to the it kind of put your phone in here and it's connected through Wi-Fi to the uh, remote I just stream the um, stream the video video directly to the phone that looked like it was working but if you look at the footage afterwards uh, you see that it, it's not very good so do use a uh, uh, micro SD card in your drone rather than relying on your phone to record. Uh, then after you know 10 12 minutes of flight the battery went low and I tried to put in my replacement battery. Then it turns out that I failed to uh, install the new firmware on the second battery so I had to go back home uh, and this time I downloaded the computer program uh, to do the uh, you know installation and that worked very well uh, I'm always a bit suspicious when when uh, your firewall tells you that oh you need to open the firewall to run this program uh, 
and and also the app that you download basically needs every permission that you can give to an app it's kind of weird but okay if you want to use this stuff then you need to to allow all of that so upgrade the second battery charge it again down i went second time i was out i had the sd card inside and it's just amazing how easy these things are to fly uh, and the uh, spark or oh, the dji 4 go 4 app uh, has some really cool uh, quick shot modes which means that you can do they call it a droney which is a kind of the drone hovers before you and then it pulls back and up uh, while keeping you in frame so you get that kind of nice uh, shot as you also have shots where it circles around you or circles around whatever uh, you tell it to circle around it will go around uh, in a perfect circle keeping the subject in in the shot uh, you got uh, something called a rocket mode where it just takes off straight up into the sky uh, predetermined uh, altitude uh, and then you have something called the helix which is kind of a combination of the three <laughs> so so it will circle around you while also pulling back and and going up into the air which is a pretty pretty cool effect actually and those are you know really really simple and idiot proof to do and then i did those on my second attempt of flying this and that's really really crazy how, how easy it is to manage so one flying session uh, is about 10 to 12 minutes before the battery they give you battery warning uh, since i'm a beginner i have uh, basically when i get the battery warning it's i believe it's like 35 percent or something like that battery left I just uh, land the drone and uh, swap the batteries. I'm guessing I could have flown a bit longer, but I want to play it safe. So each session is maybe, as I said, 10 to 12 minutes. So uh, my third session was the same day. So I had my first, my second and my third flying session the same day. Uh, this time I felt confident enough to turn off the beginner mode uh, the beginner mode basically creates like a sphere or box around where you stand uh, and and you can't fly outside of that i think it's 30 meters in any direction basically uh, which is kind of cool to have when you're a beginner because then you know the drone won't fly off somewhere but after those two attempts uh, i i felt that i didn't need it anymore and i went uh, into a small wood just uh, behind my house just flying the spark in front of me as i was walking behind it uh, along a path in, in the forest and you know trees all around and i can't imagine doing that with uh, any of the old kind of drones that you actually have to fly but the spark is so easy to fly you just if, if you panic you just leave it and it will stay there it will not go anywhere it does not drift uh, not even slightly uh, from the few attempts i have so you know flying doing really low flying above the the ground and uh, in between trees and up in tree tops finding gaps in the leaves where i can fly in and then fly down and doing some pretty interesting three-dimensional navigation and it just works the biggest danger with this drone is that you will be overconfident in your ability to fly it it's so easy you just tell it what to do and it does what you want it and if you you know you leave it and it hovers and and everything is nice it's easy to get carried away and do crazy things like you know flying under bridges and, and stuff like that uh, which would be <laughs> dangerous uh, 
uh, in terms of, of actually crashing or losing your drone. So I, I don't do things like that. And that's, it's, it's so easy to fly that that is actually, I think the biggest issue and the biggest reason people lose these things. Uh, because if you're careful, uh, it's, it's so stable, it's really amazing. Today I was out this morning and it is pretty windy today, uh, maybe six or seven meters per second winds. Uh, and uh, I flew it outside, I actually took it up pretty high altitude, higher up than I ever tried it before not pretty high altitude, maybe 30, 40 meters uh, tops, but, uh, you know, windy day and it's still very stable and it fights the wind. It's tiny, but it still fights the wind very well. And I also tried flying off uh, uh, longer, uh, slightly longer distance, maybe 100, 150 meters, and then use the return home functionality. Return home functionality didn't work when I tried it the first couple of times and I believe that's because uh, I was too close to to the starting point so it didn't actually bother with uh, you know going up in altitude and returning home it just assumed that I could see it and and uh, when I said return home uh, it just landed uh, but when I was out of sight uh, it performed perfectly and landed within you know that kind of distance from from where I started it so that worked very well now you might think that I have nothing bad to say about this uh, except for the unboxing and installation procedure but there are a couple of things that uh, I find annoying uh, first of all the camera uh, the camera has only uh, a two axis gimbal so it's kind of can go like that and it can go up like that up and down uh, to compensate for motion uh, but it can't go from left to right so uh, it has to you have to you know kind of move the whole drone to compensate for movement in left to right and I can't I shouldn't say that it's bad, but I think it could be better uh, for stabilizing the video, mostly the video. Uh, but that's not the biggest issue with the camera. The biggest issue is the resolution. It's full HD, uh, 1920 by 1080p, which I thought would be Good enough because that's what I usually use when I record things like this video is full HD uh, I'm not really into 4k but when you're moving around and you, you know you're looking at all these uh, panoramic uh, shots uh, the lack of detail in the full HD video is actually apparent uh, it, it it really shows that you're not uh, using 4K, which is a shame, really. Um, also, the 30 frames per second speed of, of the film is also on the low side. As I usually don't do 60 frames per second, but when you're moving around, uh, it would have been really great to have that extra frame rate. To, to make the video clearer. Uh, also, one annoyance that I have is with the Wi-Fi connectivity here. I've had problems connecting my phone to the drone Wi-Fi, uh, which was a pain when I was doing the installation because I had to retry connection maybe five, six, seven times. Uh, I'm guessing that might be because I was sitting too close to the drone or that I'm home so I've got, you know, my Wi-Fi and my neighbor's Wi-Fi interfering. Uh, didn't have as much problem with the, uh, with the controller, but I think the controller uses 2.4 gigahertz and uh, the 
drone is using five gigahertz so that might be why why it was easy to connect to, to the controller also when i was flying um, when i was flying in the field i didn't really have any problems uh, the video didn't come out okay even though it was you know free line of sight and only less than 30 meters away but outside my house uh, with all the other houses around having wi-fi and phones and whatnot i actually lost connection with the drone uh, a couple of times i lost the video feed which is kind of scary but but not really that bigger deal but i also lost the connection altogether uh, luckily when i did lose the connection i was actually standing quite close to the to the uh, to the drone so it nothing really happened i regained the connection pretty quickly but you know if, if you fly behind a building or, or something like that or if you fly far away uh, then it seems that this controller uh, and this drone doesn't really work that well I, I no idea why but that was a bit of an issue for me otherwise um, it's been great it's been doing everything i thought it would do and and more these uh, quick shot modes really top of the line uh, they just work it's like magic uh, with a bit of practice i'm sure that i can learn how to fly and film stuff uh, as well uh, because obviously if you want to um, if you want to do something creative uh, you can't really rely on the built-in mode you have to do them yourself uh, so learning how to fly and film is 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 something i'm looking forward to that said i think this is not the drone for any type of professional production because the quality is not good enough the video quality is not good enough with the 30 frames per, per second and uh, full hd it's not good enough if you want to do professional production you need to go for something like the magic pro or phantom 4 phantom 5 soon i guess uh, which has better cameras or perhaps the, uh, the GoPro thing which has really good cameras the stills from this still photos are not very good uh, not very good contrast not very good uh, sharpness it's okay to play around with but it's it's not good enough to do any kind of professional work so if you like me <laughs> never actually owned and, and used a drone uh, like this uh, flying around taking pictures and, uh, and video then this uh, is, a, is a very good starting point really uh, if you die, buy the fly more pack you get the extra battery you get the controller you can learn how to do all these things you can train yourself in, in flying and, and uh, you know filming and getting all the angles and shots that you want and then if if it works out and and you want to you know pick up your game then you can go out and get one of the more expensive solutions but for a starter thing this is absolutely amazing and it it's so, so small that you can easily bring it with you the bag this case basically holds all the stuff that i've shown you here except for the charging block well, the the power brick for the charger doesn't quite fit but otherwise everything will fit and you can just pick it up and you can fly around and you can film yourself and your friends uh, be careful with the no-fly zones though uh, i checked the no-fly zones in my area and there is a big red area around the uh, airport i mean the airport is 25 kilometers from here but there is a really huge no-fly zone uh, along the uh, 
the landing uh, strip. Uh, so, you know, when planes come in to land, uh, you can't fly anywhere near those. Uh, but my house and, and the area I'm living in here is outside of that no-fly zone, so that's good. Uh, other than that, there is a couple of zones where you're not allowed to fly or film, uh, or it's restricted at least, and that's military training areas that I have not far from here either. So do be aware that even if you can fly, you may not be allowed to fly, and if DJI has done their homework properly, it will not allow you to take off or fly uh, in a no-fly zone. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope to make more videos as time goes by. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't made any videos lately is because I bought a camera, which is what I use to record this, and that has taken a lot of my time and money uh, lately. Uh, really enjoying that. Might do a video when I talk about the joys of mirrorless cameras. Otherwise, uh, have a good uh, have a good day, and um, please do like, subscribe. Tell me what you think about the DJI Spark. If you have any questions on the installation procedure, uh, just write them and I will try to answer. And uh, I will see you in the next uh, video. Bye.